man. Good morning, good morning. I would like to welcome all the listeners from the previous show. You know, God is great, and, and uh, we got a great show for you. This is, uh, we're going to call it Super Saturday, right before Powerful That's Tuesday true. in Michigan. And I got Paul Rizicki, our our uh, our analyst here, our, our, our great analyst. He's always on. Always uh, good to be here. You know, it's always good to have you. This yeah. probably may be eclipsed maybe your dozens times of being here on the show with us. Something already. like that, yeah. 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 Although I think it's the first time since you've been the mayor, I think. Well, oh, yeah, I think we, I, that's right. I, I think you had forecast that. that this morning. Oh yeah, we, I think it's forecast, and we got the uh, state rep elect uh, after Tuesday if everybody casts. That's before. right. Cynthia Neely's coming on into the studio. <clears throat> we want to make sure that we always thank our Lord and Savior and uh, and pray for those who need God in their lives. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne asking you and petitioning you for your mercy and grace in our lives once again. So, Father God, we we thank you. Right now, Father God, for being here and in, in fellowship with you today. We want to reach out to those that may be needing your touch right now, Father God, and those who have lost loved ones. We pray for them, uplifting them and their spirits today, Father God, and also those that may be sick today, Father God. We ask you to illuminate our footsteps so we can walk in your will as we move forward, Father God. In your son Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. All right. And so, you know, today is a, a, a busy day. Cynthia, are you a little nervous about what's going on and what could be happening uh, on Tuesday? Um, <clears throat> no, just um, just continue to work and, and um, just anticipating Tuesday, just waiting. We continue working this Saturday. We're out. We, um, we're going to be uh, passing flyers out and making sure we um, let people know that Tuesday is election day and make sure you get out and vote. It's important that you get out and vote, exercise your vote. It's primary um, election also for the Democratic side. So we just want to make sure everybody gets out and vote on Tuesday, March 10th. Yeah, and, and Paul, you know, you know, have you been seeing the uptick or the trends be, uh, for a voter turnout in the area? From what I've been hearing, yes. It's not like the absentee ballots are up dramatically from at least one story I've heard. Mm -hmm. And from the interest I'm seeing just talking to people informally, I get the feeling this we're going to see... Maybe even a record turnout, but I mean, at the very least, it's going to be a very substantial turnout. I think there's a lot of energy, a lot of excitement we haven't seen for a long time coming up in this election. Really, any surprises that we should be uh, looking at or some of the things that we should be... Uh, well, I think, I think besides, of course, the Democratic primary and the 34th district, obviously, there are some uh, bond issues and millages on the ballot that are worth watching for the Flint schools, for Mott College, and I think Davison's got one, and I think uh, Millington might have one as well. Right. You want to dispel some of the misnomers about those um, uh, millage renewals? I mean, it's a, uh, some of the things that people uh, don't understand, maybe they don't understand that, that these are renewals. Yeah, they are, they are renewals. There's, the, the Mott one is kind of an extension of the existing bond issue of sorts. And I think in most cases, they actually are going to mean a slight reduction in taxes. Now, not dramatic, but a slight reduction in taxes because of the lower interest rates these days. So, again, my guess is because they are re renewals, they're probably going to be in good shape. But you never know. You never know. I mean, particularly for some of those issues, people can do some quirky kind of things. So, again, the key thing is to get out there and vote. Right. So uh, one of the dramatic things that have changed from last week, which they call Super Tuesday through our nation, and this week is that we have we have reduced the level of, of presidential candidates on the Democratic we side. Sure have. <laughs> and so 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 there, you know, a lot of them have fell by the wayside. Yeah, basically, I mean, when you get down to the Democrats, it's basically a, a Bernie versus Biden race for all practical purposes. And uh, it's amazing within one week how many of the uh, endorsements have come to uh, to Biden's side, and you get the sense today that he's really kind of on the road to the nomination. Having said that, though, things can change in a dime. I mean, if, if, if Sanders wins today, wins on Tuesday, uh, that could change the game dramatically. But it looks, it looks right, now, like, right now like, uh, like Biden is, is rolling up the, the endorsements and is on the track to uh, uh, what looks like a Democratic nomination. Well, you know, so with that said, you know, um, I think they're going to be stumping here in Michigan uh, today. Uh, and and, uh, right. and taking on uh, a lot of uh, what may be uh, going on as far as uh, some of the challenges that Michigan faces. I know that the, our governor has endorsed and, and other people have do endorsed throughout the state of Michigan, uh, pushing toward Biden as well. Right, right. And I think Biden's going to be in Michigan 
I believe tomorrow or Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, Sanders is going to be in town tonight at Mott College, as far as I know, among other places. So they're both going to be making treks through the state and rallying the voters for the last the last time. Well, you know, you know, I, t I tell you that, but do you have any uh, forecasts of may what what may happen on this particular ballot on on Tuesday? What may who the winners and who the losers? Are? Oh, I, if if I was guessing, I would guess Biden's got the inside track. I mean, if 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 he doesn't win, I'll be surprised. Oh, I've been surprised before, <laughs> but I th I think he's got the inside track, and it looks like given the endorsements and and really given some of the the social media commentary I'm seeing from people who look like they're finally making their decision. I mean, when there were a, a half a dozen or a dozen Democrats or more out there, people were all over the ballpark. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden you kind of see that a lot of those folks who are supporting others are, for the most part, coming to support Biden. So that, if, if I was making a guess, that's my hunch right now. Well, well and, also, you yeah, a special election for the 34th district. I, I think State I can make a safe prediction on that one, too. <laughs> you, think you, you think you could, uh, you think you, or, what, what, what are you predicting? I know you, we, we, we ask you to be clairvoyant sometime and, and, uh, and, and pay it, you know, look, take a look at what's going on. Yeah. What, do you, what is your prediction there? Well, I think, I think Cynthia's going to win. And I, while, we, while we're kicking this around, let me just for the fun of it throw out some numbers. Yeah. I'm going to guess... At least a 75-25 margin, maybe <laughs> a margin than that. Oh, no, no, 75-25. Cynthia, what do you think about that? Oh, yeah. I think that's a great prediction. <laughs> <laughs> you like that prediction? I like that prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you know, you know, you're on your way, and, and so. But the um, unfortunate thing is that you're going to have to continue on the campaign trail. That is oh, absolutely that's right. true. That's right. We barely have time to turn around yes. before you got to start all over again. Yep. But, but we have some important things, and we, you know, we're making some great strides inside the city uh, of Flint. You know, trying to make sure we clean up and and, and, and yeah. do some different things. That you know, I, I say it's always, uh, I say it's always, uh, you know, like giving birth. You know, we're in the first trimester of our electoral ship, right? And so it takes uh, it takes at least nine months to prepare life, but, but we're cleaning up things. You've been and, scrambling hard, and a lot of, you've, had, you've had a lot to deal with in the first couple of months. Uh, for, a lot, lot to, and, and I'm, I'm very proud to say that we have a fantastic team that we put yeah. forth, and we're still making some adjustments there, uh, making sure that we have people in place to be able to provide a level of service for the residents that they deserve. I'm very proud. You know, I know I get a lot of compliments on the streets, uh, you know, snow being moved. and. Uh, and I, I, I've been hearing the same thing. You've been hearing the same thing? Well, that's good because you're, you're right over there in that area. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, I'm in your district. <laughs> right, right. And so, and so uh, we, you know, we've been doing some fantastic things in economic development. You know, we, I'm hopeful that we have some very powerful announcements to make in the next month or so about some real great opportunities and uh, things moving forward uh, as economic development. We have uh, rounded things out. Uh, we have made some adjustments, you know, when the, you know, one of the things I've done is an operational audit. And operational audits uh, turn into financial type of uh, mm -hmm. pieces because, you know, operationally, you save money when you do things better. Uh, we have turned our budget into the city council. They're digesting it right now. Uh, you know, this year I was proud to say that we're not going to have any layoffs. It is, you cannot cut your way to prosperity. I see. But the equilibrium of this particular <laughs> budget, you know, I call it a cerebral budget, it's a thinking budget. Um, it's, a, it's a very delicate equilibrium. Um, if it gets modified too much, it can tip things over and then we would probably have to look at, you know, um, trying to make adjustments. Uh, I, I chose not to lay off you know, in this budget. You know, public safety is our biggest department. It's always really, critical. It's, it's always critical, critical, and we can't not cut your way out uh, and cut our way into prosperity. And so we chose to, to stand firm on this particular budget, but we do have some trouble ahead if things are continuing to move forward as, as status quo in 2022 and 2023. You know, I have a few good partners on city council, and then I have some challenges as well, but we, were, we, were, we know about the challenges. Yeah, and so, and so, you know, it's unfortunate, but I want people to stay tuned and continue to watch and monitor um, what we're doing as uh, your government. Okay, yes, yeah, Congressman, we have a congressman on the phone uh, uh, coming and calling in. Uh, good morning, you're on with Community Update. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Congressman, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Right. We, we have a live broadcast, only broadcasting about 50,000 of our favorite residents inside the city of Flint <laughs> right now. Great faith-based <laughs> listenership. And, and I know you're the congressman. And why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listening audience. And, uh, and I think you are pivotal, pivotal in uh, just in a critical endorsement that you have made uh, in our nation. But go ahead and introduce yourself. Well, thank you very much for having me. I am uh, the Sixth Congressional District uh, Representative. Uh, here in South Carolina. I live in Columbia, represent South and Sumter, uh, places that you might uh, have heard of and your listeners as well. Yes, I did make a recent endorsement of Joe Biden for President of the United States of America. I did so uh, in large measure because of the long history I have uh, with uh, Joe Biden 
Senator, well, Senator, you, you have you have a unique perspective because you also serve with the other candidate uh, that's running for this particular office, and and I know uh, you have uh, you know you've been there, and I think you, you how many years have you been in the Senate, uh, Senator? Oh, I've been in Congress. House. I've been on the outside uh, twenty eight years. Uh, I've been in Get out of 
to be in one day and they will not be in the market to left. And I think that it's up to us, African Americans, who know what it is not to have uh, free access, who not to have what I like to call the deal breaking of this country, available and accessible uh, to them. But that's what is at stake. If you're going to have the people tell you that deal for a good education program, and don't tell you how it's going to be accessible and affordable, they are thinking, thinking of you. It can be housed, it can be health care. That is what's on the ballot. Yeah, also, also on the ballot, you know, here in the state of Michigan, here in this particular district that we serve in, we have also a special election for a state rep seat, uh, the 34th district, and and I think you may share something in common with that that 34th uh, state rep candidate. You know, originally they, they uh, come from the, the great state of Arkansas, I know you're in the <laughs> southern su southern portions of the state, but. But, but I have a, a fondness for this particular candidate, and, and I'm going <laughs> I'm I'm to let, let this candidate introduce herself to to you. Uh, we share the same last name and the same address, uh, Congressman. Uh, uh, and so it, it is. It is my wife. She is. Uh, she is vying for to replace me um, in this uh, special election for the state rep uh, house seat, and uh, because I was elected uh, this past November. Uh, of 19 to serve as the mayor of the city of Flint. And so I'll let her tell you uh, just a couple of things about herself and, and maybe you can do a dual endorsement of Biden and, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, uh, and also endorse the state rep special election seat. Go ahead, Cynthia. Good morning, Congressman. I am Cynthia Neely. And I am, it's a pleasure to talk to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As Sheldon, I've already told you, I am running for um, 34th uh, district seat here in the state of Michigan. And I am also going to endorse Biden this morning because that's who I am supporting. Well, thank you. <laughs> see, see, uh, see. Good luck in, in this election. Um, I uh, have not been keeping up with state legislative seats. Uh, I have been to Flint several times. Uh, even before uh, the recent issues uh, involving water there. Um, that is an issue uh, that is very, very important to the people in my congressional district. Now, uh, there with you, it's more urban in my community, uh, in my congressional district, it, it's more rural. But their drinking water uh, is critical, uh, not just to uh, health, uh, but to economic development as well. Uh, so I uh, wish you well uh, in this process. I wish I knew uh, more about it, but uh, good luck. Uh, I look forward <laughs> to working with you uh, if you're successful. And it sounds like I uh, would uh, be voting for you by this today in the district. <laughs> Well, thank you. So that's that's wonderful. You know, well, we, one thing about it is at least you convince one, uh, you know, or, or maybe two elected officials to go with your <laughs> candidate uh, today. But but we do we, we do want to check in on our congressperson further from the fifth district. How is that rookie uh, Dan Kildee yeah. doing down there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. Dan and I are just great buddies. Uh, he brings Flint issues uh, to our attention. Time and time again, he has brought me there. I've been there twice uh, since he's been uh, uh, in the Congress, uh, and of course, uh, I think he's a very effective representative. Oh, I was not him, and me and him is one of my chief with. And he also was very critical uh, in my campaign to, to become uh, the whip uh, again, and, and, and I think he's going to be an effective job. Uh, in the right. Well, you know, he, Dan and I have uh, a lot in common. You know, we have also a running joke. We graduated from the same high school. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I always like the teaser says, we both grew up uh, in the city of Flint, black and poor, until we graduated out of it. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but thank you, Congressman, for, for weighing in. We have our, our political uh, 
a, a consultant guru yeah, here, Paul Rizicki, a professor here. And uh, do you want to you have any questions? I was going to say if the congressman's endorsement was critical to, to Biden's really success in the last week. I mean, as you take a look at what's happened in the last week, the whole move to Biden and the endorsements that followed really began with a congressman's endorsement. It was critical. It made a huge difference in South Carolina and a huge difference around the nation beyond that. Well, it seems like you put your thumb on the scale there in the Carolinas <laughs> and, uh, and, and, you, and, you, and you help uh, uh, Vice President Biden out. So congratulations to that. And, and if you're ever around this way again, if, if Congressman Kildee brings you here, uh, you have a, a you know a, a mayor and a state rep that will be welcoming you and uh, in your your visit. Well, thank you so much. I look forward uh, to returning to Flint uh, after we get up a new president who will understand how to bring communities into the process. Who will listen? I tell people all the time. Absolutely, and if, if uh, uh, Vice President Biden will be looking for a vice president candidate to run along with him, it may be one of two Neelys available. I guess you just ruled me out. I, I can well, never you're, do you're that. Okay, so <laughs> Cynthia, that, that's your call. <laughs> Cynthia's got a shot at it. <laughs> Well, that's okay. Well, one of the Neely still is on the chart. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time this morning, yeah. Congressman, and uh, God bless you. And we look forward to your visit uh, sometime in the near future to the, the, the state of Michigan. Thank you. Look forward to it. All right. God All bless. Right. God bless. So what do you think about that, you know, um, Paul? As I say, his, his, his visit was, his, his endorsement was critical to, to the, 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 the Biden success in the last week. You know, it's hard to imagine. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, people had written Biden off. And all of a sudden, once you hit South Carolina with that big victory there, and again, that endorsement was critical, all of a sudden, Biden became the, became the front runner. And I th my guess is, I think he's going to go to the nomination now. All right. Well, Cynthia, what do you think? So since you're still on the, you know, since you are the, uh, one of uh, the two Neelys that could be a vice president. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you got so, the inside so track. You got the inside track. Right now. <laughs> Well, I think it's um, I think it's gonna be Biden. I, I, I'm gonna agree with Paul. I yeah, think I, it look it looks really good for him right now. Everything is moving in his direction. So. Well, let's. Uh, and we could boost Cynthia for VP. Now, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. right. Well, you know, hey, you know, I tell you, you know, because you know, I tell you. You know, we, we laugh and we, we, we talk about these things, but it's very important to engage the most critical American right that we have, and that's the right to participate in choosing our leadership. We have to choose leadership because we will follow them. And once we choose them to follow them, we have to try to graduate our communities to better places. And national elections are important, but not as important as local that's election. True. Uh, politics are very much local. Um, it won't be the president talking about how to plow your snow or pave your roads in your local areas so or your police protection. Yeah. And they can they can make sure you get the, your fair share. And also in the 2020 census count, we all have to make sure we count, uh, make sure we get, get, get counted. Uh, March 12th, we're going to be having a town hall meeting at City Hall from 1 to 3 p.m. That's March 12th. Uh, Vice, um, uh, the Lieutenant Governor Garland Grillcrest will be here. Jocelyn Benson will be here as well. Also, Dana Nelson, uh, our attorney general, will be here at the town hall meeting 
talking about the census, yeah. making sure we get people mm -hmm. engaged and also hiring people to do uh, the jobs of being uh, calculators and circulators of the information. Yeah, that was my column for East Village Magazine this month. <laughs> oh. Be sure you turn out for the census, it's critical. You know, and the funny thing is this year, because of all the stuff about immigration and people getting frightened about that, people are scared. But it's, 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 it's confidential information, it only takes about 10 minutes. Be sure you get out and be counted. Right, not only are you a professor, teacher, but now you are you doing columns? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. East, yeah, yeah. Every East, month, East Village Magazine. East Village Magazine. Yeah, oh, wow, are. man. Paul, you're just, you are a renaissance man. <laughs> it's yeah. my retirement gig. <laughs> yeah. well, you do such a fantastic job, and it's always a pleasure having you in studio with us. Cynthia, um, this is the last Saturday before election. Go yes. ahead and address your uh, constituents and, and, and the residents of the 34th District. Well, once again, I just want everyone to know Tuesday, March, is an important day. I need everyone to get out and vote and hope hopefully you'll catch that vote for Cynthia Neely. Um, it is very important that everyone get out to vote. Please get out. I can just say it a thousand times yeah, and it wouldn't be enough. It's critically important. You know, it's just critical, yes, important that you get out and vote, not just for me, but just for the primary um, election for our Democratic a presidential race. Please, everyone, vote, vote, vote Tuesday. A lot of people think that I'm already in office. That, I am not. That was the primary. I need you out there Tuesday, March 10th. Well, that's wonderful. And I'll be back for a second half an hour at 1030 to 11. I'll be filling in on that show. We'll continue that conversation, talking about the 2020 census count and also some more election. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to call it advice, but encouragement. Uh, to get out there and participate. Uh, Cynthia Neely, you always are marvelous. Uh, I, well, I said good morning to you already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I presume you have. <laughs> and Paul, it's always great. Always great always to be great here. Always great to have you here. And so, you know, um, we have to really work together in this community. We have to really uh, not be so intoxicated by the elements of life. Um, usually it's sobered by the elements of loss. If you don't participate in this voting process, that is an element of loss, and we need yeah. to be sober and approach these things sober-mindedly uh, and pay attention to what's going on in your community, making sure that we all work together for a better outcome for all of us. We cannot, we cannot not win uh, uh, because we, we deserve so much better. Our future deserves so much better. And I thank you guys. Uh, Mom, uh, breakfast is going to be a little bit late today after the second radio show. I love you guys. God bless. Cynthia Neely, I'll be voting for you. All right. Thank you. So one here. in the can. Oh, All right. Two here. in the can. You got your votes already. <laughs> Paul, Paul over there, are you uh, voting for Cynthia Neely? Cynthia who? Okay, just checking. <laughs> All right. God, God bless. I'll, I'll get him a bag of popcorn. He'll vote for you. <laughs>